haven't done nearly that many, so be, be loud, be proud, be, be, here, be heard. We're really excited that you're here. So, um,
then all of those ideas get boiled down through the really hard work of the people that run those work groups. And if you saw today, there's a lot going on there. The board of directors then looks at those, approves those, and then those ultimately become standards. So there's a very disciplined process, but again, a very democratic one, which is why it's so important that you guys come. So there's eight work groups, and I mean, many of you participated in them, so I'm not going to go too far into each of these, but the first one, like I mentioned, is the R&D group, where that's really, you know, no holes barred, tell us what you want, let's try something new. The data dictionary is the one that really creates the specific set of data fields that can be leveraged in a variety of ways. The internet tracking talks about the ways to keep track of consumer behaviors and agent behaviors and what an influ influence that, that might have on the way data gets displayed. Payloads are about, um, it's a word that's way too techy for me, <laughs> but for those that are, most of you are in here are more like me, I think. Um, it outlines the minimal standardized feeds for things like IDX and VAO. So it's basically the data set, that's what a payload is. It sounds really scary. It sounds like something that would come out of an engine or something for me. Um, property unique identifier. This one is really cool, and the, there was some great, I heard some very spirited debate on this one this morning. But the idea is that there could be one consistent way to define a property that everybody in the food chain could use. So whether you're using it for a website or a back office solution or to attach a, you know, roster information to it, um, for product properties that are for sale and for those that are not, it can all, there could be one way to define that and everybody could use the same thing, which would make life so much easier, especially if you have situations where there might be overlapping displays of, of information. Then the rest one dot x is basically the group that defines the standards and what level they're going to be at. And then the transport web API is the group that talks about, again, how does the data get pushed and pulled from different locations. So all different components um, of what goes on, and it shows you how complicated this stuff really is. And then there's three committees, the technical committee, the certification committee, and the marketing committee, and they each oversee different parts of the industry, or uh, parts of the program. So, you know, all of these groups need help, are interested in your help, are interested in your perspective, and frankly, the more contradictory, the better, because it stimulates really good conversation. So if you're in a room and you're afraid that what you're saying is completely in conflict with everybody else, that's a good thing. We want to hear more of that. All right, so what is this all about? Why should brokers care? That's really what I'm here to help you try to understand today. And to really engage with you to help us understand why brokers should care and what we can do to make it more meaningful for you. But we did some research recently, um, Realty Alliance and Leading RE actually helped us field this. And so we asked the first question about, you know, what is it that the challenges that you face? So the brokers told us that, you know, usually it's between one and ten systems that you have to ingest MLS data into. That's a lot, right? And so what are the chances of those breaking? And then multiply that in some markets where, you know, some of you have 20, 30, 40 MLS that you work with. It's a very complicated web of ingestion of MLS data and you know, dis distribution of it. And so we asked, what are the following areas that have caused issues or challenges for you when it comes to data? And the single biggest one was inconsistent data fields across the MLSs that I work with. Second only to um, inconsistent business rules from the MLSs that I work with. So those are really, that's the thing that the heart of what's at the bottom of this is trying to think about if you want to move from one to two to five to 10 to 20 markets, Reso, once adopted through your technology companies and through your system, is going to make it a lot easier for you to do that, and hopefully a lot less expensive. So how many of you in the larger brokerages have at least one person dedicated to data issues? So quite a few of you, right? So not to say that that person would necessarily go away, but wouldn't it be great if they could spend their energies on thinking about great new ways to use that data as opposed to trying to normalize it all day long? And I hear nightmares from the folks that have to do that job. It's not a fun job. <clears throat> and here was a really important one. How important is it to your brokers that all MLSs you work with offer considered data fields for you to work through your website, internal systems, and document processing systems? 91% of you said yes, that's what we need. So the industry's been listening. Like I say, they've been working on this since the 90s. But the more input we have from you about what that means, what you really need in those data fields, the more, we, the more legitimate it's going to become, and frankly, the more marketable it's going to become. That's the whole idea, right? This is amazing data that you can use to make your agents and your brokerages smarter and better positioned to be successful. That's what this is really about. 
So it's way under the hood. For those of us that, are, that come from the sales and marketing side, it's like, what is all that stuff? What it really is is a way that you're going to get to be able to do things you've never been able to do before. And 88% of the people we talked to want the broker boys represented. Thank you. You just did that. That's awesome that you're here. You're spending your time. You're spending your energy. Not only learning about this, but then really starting to engage. We had a great conversation at, at Inman this summer uh, with Joe Rand from Rand Realty, if any of you know, them, know him. He's a great guy. And he was talking about three or four things that he wishes he could do with data. And Jeremy, the director, was gleeful in telling him, you know what, you can do all of those things right now. That we build standards are going to help you achieve the kind of innovation you're looking to do in your brokerage. He was thrilled. So those are the kind of questions. When you're here this week, push on it. Ask that question. Now, I've always wanted my website to be able to do X. Is that possible? It may be that it is. It may be that it's in works. Or it may be that it's coming soon. Or maybe you've come up with an amazing new idea and you can really influence this. So this was a quote we got from the thing from our uh, survey. I thought it was great. The industry as a whole has a track record of, of not responding to change in a cohesive way. If RISO can help shape a cohesive response going forward, it's potentially huge. Do you agree with that? Right? That's why we're here. So we got to make it not be potentially huge. We got to make it huge. So just to get into the details a little bit, not too far, but just to give you some perspective. You know, sometimes I hear. Um, I hear technology companies and brokers just saying, well, that dictionary thing, it's not big enough yet. It doesn't have everything I need. And I'm sure that there's always going to be more that we can do. But today, it has 1,078 fields and over 1,475 values. That's a lot of fields, right? That's a, there, you can do a lot with that. So it has property features, members and agents, offices, media, open houses, green fields, property history, contacts, save searches, all kinds of stuff. And if you've been in the work groups, you hear there's a lot of other new areas coming as well. So it's pretty cool. So uh, what's really what's been recently added is a standardized broker broker reciprocity IDX payload feed. And for those that were in the meeting, morning meeting, you heard a lot about that. And there's also a data dictionary wiki, which is great. That's basically the translation of you know what what does it do, how does it do it, how can it help me do it. And by the way, if any of you when you're having Questions about this, you know, our challenges with this. I can tell you that the staff at Riso is so responsive. They will work through this with you. They will answer the questions for you. They know this like the back of their hand, and they can be really helpful. So definitely call on them. All right. So what are the kinds of things that you can use Riso for? Just to get the ball rolling, right? These are just a few examples, just to get you kind of your head in the game. So the first is if you operate in more than one MLS market. I'm sure many of you do. You know the hassles that that can create, right? This is one of his most important goals: is to make that process of normalizing information across more than one marketplace easy for you, um, because it's just not fun to do that right now. And importantly, what that allows you to not do is go to the lowest common denominator. How many of you had to get have gotten rid of fields you really wanted because one MLS didn't have it, right? <laughs> a lot of you, right? We want to get rid of that problem. Um, and here's a great one too. What if you want to test out a new product idea without aggregating data across all of your regions? So you want to just test something. Is Dan Troop in here? Last year, Dan, as a broker, was the guy that won the contest for the most innovative um, topic that was, or little piece of software that was built last year. I thought that was really cool. But he used Riso data to do that. Uh, expansion, obviously, we talked a little bit about that. And then back office solutions, too. There's a lot of things and a lot of intelligence you're trying to build into your business to be smarter about what's happening, what are your agents doing, what are they not doing, what are consumers doing. A variety of different questions that brokers are trying to ask to get more well prepared. And again, Riso's going to help you with all that. So these are just some thought starters. There's a lot of things it can do. But does that help for those that are new to this to just kind of frame it a little bit for you? To get a better idea what it's about now? Okay, um, so this is a great idea, right? But without every MLS in the country participating, it doesn't help you. So Riso has been hard at work, and I can tell you very hard at work over the last 18 months or so. They now have over 630 of the roughly 720 MLSs that are now certified, and they've got one point well over 1.2 million realtors now that have access to this. So for all intents and purposes, there is pretty much ubiquitous adoption, and this changes every day. They're, they're chipping away to get everybody to have it. 
So it doesn't help you if one market has it, another one doesn't, right? That's the whole goal is to get this everywhere, and that's what's really been, what's, you know, the effort has been. Okay, so now we hear sometimes that it's a great idea, people are buying into it, they're starting to see the value of it, and then they get, the rubber starts to meet the road, and they call their MLS, and the MLS says what? You say, Do I, can I get the resale feed? And they go, uh, the what? <laughs> What's resale? Oh, we don't have that. Even though we know they do have it, right? So you're going to have to help us with, with some of that stuff. Just so you know, MLSs are required, underline required, to offer the data dictionary. In order for them to be compliant with the IDX rules, they have got to have it. So don't let any of them tell you, oh, I don't have to do that, or I don't want to do that. It's not an option if they want to stay in the game. Um, and they must not have made it. Most of them have yet not made it like native. So there's the server with the normal MLS data, and then there's another set of servers that, are, that have reso data. Some are, are making them, they're combining and making them native, but they are available. So don't let them tell you that they're not. So the first thing, ask your MLS if they're compliant. Hopefully they're gonna say yes. But we have two places to show you, and we can, we'll get these, I think they're somewhere on, well, they're, I know they're on the website, but we can get you this deck too if you want. You can check on reso.org and see if they're certified. There's a list of all of them, okay? You can also check to see if they're not certified. So if someone says they're not certified and they are, you can go to the list and go, well, why is your name up there? <laughs> You've got to help me with this, right? So Reso's trying to help you have some sort of checks and balances. And then bottom line, if you can't get anywhere, that happens sometimes, Call Jeremy, he'll help you. <laughs> he's, the, he's the guy. He, he does an awesome job of chasing things down for people when they need it. Okay, so the next thing that's coming is the Resale Web API. And for simplest definition, I know many of you know what this is, and you've probably been hearing the, the word all morning, but it's really a way to connect to two technologies very seamlessly, right? So if, if you, did anybody ever log into an app through um, Facebook? where you just put in your Facebook, that's, that's what an API can do. It basically seamlessly passes information from one application to another. In its simplest definition, that's what it is. So that's what we're gonna be trying to do, or we are doing with the, the Reso Web API. So it basically, the Reso, Reso? <laughs> Reso Web API, has the, it's the latest in data, data transport technologies, and it's using two global standards that have been built by people like Microsoft and Oracle and all of the largest technology companies in the country, in the world actually, called OData and OpenID Connect. OpenID Connect, for example, is, the, is what Facebook uses to do what I just described. So this is all being built on things that are ubiquitously available. So if you work with a technology company that maybe is neuter to the real estate industry, they're gonna be familiar with this stuff too, so it won't slow you down. So what is it gonna do? It's just gonna make it easier. It's gonna make, you make, make it easier to pull data very quickly and not have to push all of the data which can slow you down, can cost you money having to buy more servers. It just it makes it a lot more efficient. It's just the right way to do things today. <clears throat> and we're, we're making progress on this one. We're not quite as far along yet. There's uh, 23 MLSs to date, so about 300,000 members have access to this. There's a big push on right now with all of the MLS vendors to make this come to life as well. So you're gonna be seeing that soon. But there's still plenty of opportunity just using the data dictionary in the meantime. So what's being worked on next? Well, there, the next one coming out in spring of 2017, there's a lot of information for standardizing showing information. So for people that have showing appointment software either available through their MLS or through their brokerage, there's gonna be a lot of that. Um, internet tracking activity standardization as we talked about in one of the groups this morning. Accessibility features, that's becoming um, obviously a very important component of every website and that's gonna be added. And then a lot of neat um, elements for save searches, for things, so when a consumer wants to save a search or wants to like or, or, or favorite searches like they do on many of your websites, there's some great standards coming for that. And then also portal preferences, so if someone wants to have a, a portal setting, that's available as well. And, and again, just to remind us all, Every MLS must adopt whatever the latest standard is for RISA within one year. So don't ever let your MLS tell you that that's not available because it is, and it has to be. And if it isn't, or they're not, they're not giving you what they say that they're supposed to be giving to you, again, let, let Jeremy know because he can help champion that for you. Um, one of the things that RISA is really serious about is enabling you to do what you do best, which is create an innovation and serve your customers. 
right? Not worry about all the inconsistencies that the industry's had and that have slowed you down. That's, it's trying to get all that out of the way so you can just go what you do, compete. That's your job, right? It's not about worrying about why one MLS has one thing and one has another. So with that, NAR has a new version of the data dictionary that comes out every year. It's part of the policies, and it's, you don't need to know the numbers or anything, but it makes them have to update it within 12 months, and there's really no exceptions to that, with the exception of MLSs that are broker-owned, um, and of course, hopefully they're gonna be even more broker-friendly, so it shouldn't be an issue with them, but they're the only ones that are not officially required. So if you work with an association that offers an MLS, they are required to do this. Don't let them tell you that they're not, okay? Okay, so in the resource transportation standards, and again, that's the, the information that helps move data from one place to another, um, there's going to be one final release of the REST spec to address maintenance and additional functionality like geospatial support. I see some of our geospatial technology companies in here today. They're going to really benefit from that along with you. They're also going to be sunsetting the REST group, which is sort of the old, old way of doing this stuff. That's going to be gone um, relatively soon. And then here's a really important one, and a couple of brokers were talking about to me about this at lunch today, that in Q2, the web API will ultimately become two-way. Right now, the MLS can push data to you, but you can't push it back. In Q2, you're going to be able to, to go both ways, which again is going to create a whole new opportunity for innovation that isn't available today. And it will also support gross broker listing additions into tools like things like Upstream that we all know are coming as well. So there's what's really neat about Reso too is that there's a lot of integration between what's going on with, with MLS policy, what's going on with industry initiatives that are very broker-centric, like Broker Public Portal, as well as thinking about how to make all of this work together. So it's a group that's very, very thoughtful, and it's gonna become even more thoughtful with all of you here, we're so excited. So here's the most important slide I, I want all of you to, to remember this. The first thing, what do you need to do? If you're not a member, you need to become a member. You can't contribute, you can't be part of the program unless you're there. And then, of course, the most importantly, getting involved with those work groups. Because your voice is different. It's not an MLS voice, it's a really important voice. MLS voices are critical too, but together, that's where we create magic, right? So we have to have both. Um, holding each of your MLSs accountable. They're here to serve your needs. The work has been done at the MLS level and at the industry level to get you what you need. Just make sure that you're getting it. Um, here's another one. When you start working with your technology suppliers, ask them if they're certified. How many of them are here today? Not here, here, but here. See how many of them are serious and eventually you know, even encourage and or even require them to be part of this because if they're not part of it, it's going to be much more difficult for you to get there. And to continue to support research through NAR policy, uh, leading real estate companies in the world and the Realty Alliance have been phenomenal in supporting and, and, and successfully accomplishing, changing a lot of the IDX policies to make them work better for brokers. Continue to do that because it's really, really helpful. <coughs> And make the move to, to, uh, to uh, Reso as you migrate. So in some companies that are already in many, many markets, it's very difficult to have to go back and, and change them all at once. But we're working with a few companies now that as they enter into a new market or a new MLS relationship, are taking that market and making that Reso compliant. And then going market by market by market, more manageable internally, probably more cost effective, and a way to get there that's going to be really powerful for you in the long run. And again, eventually, everything you have, if it's reso compliant, it's going to make your life so much easier. It's just going to take time. But we've got to start somewhere. And so the first thing is just to have you guys understand just a little bit about the power of it, and then we can go from there. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for me? Please don't ask me about payloads. <laughs> no? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you again so much. We really appreciate you being here.